I'm still trying to figure it out. An agreement between the NCAA and all five of the power conferences settling three federal antitrust cases paved the way for athletes to be compensated for their contributions instead of being treated as amateurs being paid for their athletic work through scholarships and for their education. So I'm reading through it, and I immediately thought of Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. I'm going to put it on him. Pat, explain this to me as a football fan. What's it mean? Uh, it, it is a new day in uh, college athletics, Dan, but, you know, this is kind of a, another step along the way to a bunch of new days. But what it basically means is that schools can actually themselves pay athletes. Uh, that's the, the new dynamic here, as opposed to trying to farm it out to a collective or pretending you're not involved in who's going to get paid what or just flat out boosters paying athletes under the table. So we have an institutionalized form of compensation for athletes. It's a ton of money. Uh, the the settlement is in the billions and will be tens of billions uh, going forward for the next 10 years. Okay. A few questions come to mind. Uh, is there still going to be NIL? There will still be NIL. And some of this may actually be considered NIL money, uh, but there will be most likely be name, image, and likeness opportunities for athletes above and beyond whatever their quote unquote salary would be, which would ostensibly be NIL salary, but there will be more available to them. Yeah. Are they university employees? Not at this point. And that's kind of been one of the needles the NCAA and college athletics have been trying to thread here of we don't want an employee employer relationship. Let's see if we can find a way to pay you guys without making it uh, specifically that kind of a deal. Compensation for what your sport, the revenue that your sport, how, how do I divvy up the starting quarterback or the star of the lacrosse team that won a national title? Uh, to be determined. And that will probably get dri uh, dribbled down to be a uh, institutional decision of how the money gets distributed. Uh, the question there becomes, okay, what's the Title IX impact? Uh, if you're going to pay the football team X, do you also have to pay the women's basketball team this amount or, you know, a star women's volleyball player? Uh, so the, all of those details have not been hashed out at all, but it's probably going to be up to each, each institution. Do you want to pay up to $22 million a year in salary, basically, to players? Or do you want to pay less than that? And then who gets it? Oh, so the university, it's case by case of, do you want to spend all the money each year on your athletes? Yeah, that's at least the theory right now, is that this will be school by school decision. And some schools, you know, look, your, your Ohio States, your Michigans, your Alabamas, uh, et cetera, will, will be able to, ease, Texas, easily be able to spend the full $22 million and then some, you know, via outside NIL if they want. Other schools... The Mississippi States, the Iowa States, the Purdue's may say, ah, we're not going to go that far. And then the big question is really how far down the scale do you go for the schools outside of the Power Five? Does this make it more likely or less likely that college football is going to maybe have 40 or 50 teams that each year uh, compete for a national title? I think it's another step in that direction, you know, that, that this is a further economic uh, thinning of the herd, if you will. And, you know, who can afford this and who can't afford it? Uh, you know, there's only so many players to go around. I mean, there's more players than there is spots. So you should still theoretically be able to have, uh, you know, a a Cincinnati or or somebody from outside of the power five that can get players. But yeah, if, if you're going to the, the, the best players are going to be the highest paid players and they're going to go to the schools with the most money. Uh, so this is going to continue probably the trend that we've seen of consolidating the sport into a fewer number of contenders. Athletes still get scholarships uh, through this? Yeah, athletes will still get scholarships. There's actually uh, part of this will probably be that there will be more scholarships, uh, more athletes on scholarship, but there will be roster limits. Now, everybody on the roster, if you have if you cap a football roster at 90, everybody can get a scholarship, whereas opposed it used to be 85. Baseball scholarships would have been in short short supply, will go up, uh, et cetera. That'll probably be a school-by-school school thing, too, of how many scholarships you want to fund. But you can now fund basically everybody who's on your roster. Why would the NCAA settle? 
because they were going to lose for the 97th time in court. Uh, you know, their record is the Washington Generals basically in court. And so they were looking at the possibility of another loss here and up to $20 billion, if you believe the lawyers, in uh, potential damages then. How do you see this playing out with Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, like, are they going to be separating even even further from teams that are in their own conference? Probably. You know, I think so. We'll see. You know, that this will be uh, an interesting kind of uh, barrier, I guess, for schools to say, like, hey, Mississippi State, do we can we do this? Can we can we spend what Alabama spends? Uh, and try to get players you know, they they certainly have people who are willing to spend money, but are you willing to spend the same amount or is this a further uh, area where they pull away? And then ultimately the decision becomes, is this just become a big 10 sec enterprise or even within those conferences? Is it, you know, there's, there's certain teams that don't want to keep up or can't keep up. So this is a real challenge for the ACC, for the big 12, for the, what's left of the Pac-12, and then within those power conferences, you know, it, it, does it become survival of the fittest? And I'm wondering about college basketball. Maybe there's a chance players stay in college an extra year, depending on the compensation. Do you see that as a possibility here? Sure. Well, yeah, I think we've already seen that. You know, we've seen some players, uh, you know, especially I can think of, of North Carolina, uh, uh, Kansas, uh, who have stayed in school longer than you might have expected because there's money to be had there and their draft status isn't as secure. And I think that this will continue that probably on the football side as well. You look at Michigan's roster last year, you had a number of guys who could have gone to the NFL, but this, they stuck around because they were getting compensated. And I think this will probably only reinforce that. And you go back to when Johnny Manziel was on the cover of time magazine, that was 11 years ago. And the title was time to pay college athletes. Yeah, no, I mean, look, this has been in the works for a while, right? We have seen step by step the the NCAA's obstructionist viewpoint kind of just be whittled away and eroded, and eventually it became indefensible, and then they started losing in court, and everything has really snowballed in the last five years. And, uh, yeah, the Johnny Manziel, oh, gosh, I had to get paid under the table days are long gone. Good to talk to you, Pat. Have a good weekend. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Dan. That's uh, Pat Fording. Yahoo Sports College football senior writer.